It's Turner Business News now uh, with Giles Beckford. Hi, Giles, our business editor. We've got the first lot of industry housing market figures for the year, good, bad, or different. What the hell are they? Uh, well, Real Estate Institute numbers were in today. They showed a, a, a slight drop in prices overall, uh, but the annual price growth is about 3.4%. Uh, and that is just a, sl a bit of a slowdown from December. The uh, real thing that uh, I think cheered up uh, the Real Estate Institute was that the number of houses sold was the highest in 19 months. And to them that suggested perhaps uh, a little bit more life coming back into the market. Weaknesses obviously uh, in some of the main centres. Auckland is still losing some ground in parts of it. Uh, some of the other areas that were doing gung-ho, Waikato, Bay of Plenty, also slowing as is Wellington. But top of the South Island still looking pretty strong. So you can take your choice as to whether this is a sign that the market has perhaps found some sort of flaw. Real Estate Institute is a little bit cheered, remembering that January still has that feel of the holidays about it. Mm. We'll wait and see what comes out of uh, the February numbers, but there's been a slight easing in those loan to value ratios, and that will be helpful. They're hoping that perhaps just a little bit more zest in the market to come. Thanks, Charles. This next talking point is fascinating, and that is that the Stock Exchange has refused to let a Chinese company use a local uh, listed shell company for a backdoor listing on the share market, right? Indeed. This is a company called TRS, which is... Um, I think in the trade they would call them a penny dreadful. It doesn't do very much. It has the legal structure of being listed on the stock exchange. It was uh, several years ago being touted by Kim.com as the way that he was going to bring his uh, new company Mega to the market. That didn't come to pass. Uh, this one, this deal was uh, involving a Chinese company called Shen Yang Leader, which was involved in uh, beauty and health products. Um, now, it was proposing a structure which is quite complex, but the upshot of it is really that uh, you can control the company, but without uh, having control of the majority of the shares. It's called a VIE, or a Variable Interest Entity. It's legal in some jurisdictions around the world. It's not acceptable in Australia. Uh, the company knocked on the door of the stock exchange here and said, would you allow a company to be set up in New Zealand on your exchange using this sort of structure? And the stock exchange has come out and said, no, quite simply, it's too opaque. You can't see actually who's behind these sorts of things. The Chinese authorities don't particularly like them, but it's a structure that's used to allow foreigners to invest in Chinese companies. Um, it's got lots of pitfalls. There's a lot of murkiness about it. It reminded me a bit of the uh, Overseas Investment Officer's refusal last year to let uh, HNA, another Chinese company, buy UDC Finance yeah. off ANZ Bank. It just suggests to me that authorities here uh, are perhaps being a bit more alert and are putting a bit more scrutiny on these sorts of deals. Not everything is going to get past the regulators, and that is a good thing. Yep, it is. Thanks, Charles. What happened on the markets today? Very quickly, the top 50 index, it had a positive start. It's closed just four points higher. No great shakes there, 8,063. Fletcher Building shareholders can tell you that you're down another nine cents. That's about 1%, 696. But at least the worst of the bleeding would appear to have stopped. On the currency front, 73.7 US cents and 92.8 Australian. Now, business editor Giles Beckford. Thank you very much indeed, Giles.